Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor me, thank you for this opportunity to minister God's word, um, bring God's word to the people. Amen. So, um, this is a shouting service. Like, you can already see. I hope you can see. I told my wife, um, I think like two days ago, so I was supposed to have ministered, but then I traveled, and then there was a flow that was in the house. <laughs> and that flow did not stop last week. And you see, it has not still stopped. Amen. And in the course of the week, I just felt that, Babel, I think going into this service, I need to be drunk. <laughs> I'm serious. And it shows why. That you need to see what's going on in this place. Yet it's the spirit of God, but it's special. And we're going to do some things like that. Uh, before we even get, I, I don't know if I will preach. I don't know, sir. But you see, as part of our lives, there are a lot of things that, or maybe let's start from one, Psalm 107. Let's start like that. Psalm 107, let's read from our text. <clears throat> what a way to start. <laughs> Verse 17, fools, not you. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquity, are afflicted. Their soul abhors all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and healed them. Healed them of what? They had destruction. They were near the gates of death. Their soul was not even eating meat. They were lean. They were they were, they were in trouble. He said he sent his word and he healed that. And delivered them from all their oppressions. Who are these kind of people? Let's backtrack a little bit with verse 9. He says he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. He says such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Being bound in affliction and iron. He says, because. So he's explaining this kind of people that he's now trying to feed. How did they become fools? What are their transgressions? How did they miss it? He says, because they rebelled against the words of God. And contempt the counsel of the Most High. Or they abandoned. They made likely the counsel of the Lord. So to those people, he sent his word. You see, when we begin to discount certain things in God's word. Or certain things that God has spoken to us about. We get into that lean place. And you see, God has no other option or no other arrangement for you. Except that same word that you left. So he will send it again to you. So, there are a number of things that the Bible tells us to do. All the time. For example, pray Without season, right? So, we make an effort every day to pray. Sometimes when you don't, you know that something is wrong. Am I, are we together? You know that something is wrong. Like, <clears throat> I did not pray today. Because the Bible says to pray without season. Again, if you pray maybe 23 hours, you are still in deficit. Am I correct? You are still in deficit because it says to pray all the time. When, when do I know when to pray? When you remember that you need to pray, just pray. So, it tells us to pray every time. 
He tells us that this book of the law shall not depart out of our mouths. But we shall meditate on it day and night. So, we also make an effort to read the Bible every day. Am I correct? Aha. Uh -huh. We read the Bible every day, or we fail to do. When we fail to do, we know that something is wrong. You start saying, ah, pastor, I've not read my Bible in a while. And start saying, ah, it is wrong. You need, to, you need to schedule your time. You need to schedule your hours and ensure that you are praying and ensure that you are studying the word. So people have times of prayer and times of studying of the word. And then it talks about meditation. So people have quiet time. I'm going somewhere. Some of you can already get it. You have quiet time. I said, within this time, I just want to. <laughs> I remember a story of in my secondary school. I went to a Catholic school. There was one brother who, because of this, said the Bible says we should have quiet time. So he said, during mass, which is the early morning, he said, we're just going to wait on the Lord. All these brothers that are in training to be reverend fathers. He said, we're just going to wait on the Lord. And just be quiet before the Lord. And just rest before the Lord. Guess what we all did? Plus the brother, we all slept. <laughs> The man was tired. The man knew to run mass. <laughs> so we all just slept. So people have quiet time. And you are so quiet. You want to communicate with the Lord. You just want to be there. And just catch on what the Lord is saying. Sometimes they tell you, like, apart from meditation time, like, be quiet. One of the other things the Bible tells us to do all the time is rejoice. He tells us to rejoice evermore. He tells us that you should rejoice always. So, we are always in deficit. But do you remember your day? That, ah, I have not rejoiced today. And it's wrong. Pastor was telling us last week about scheduling joy. Within your, within your space. To schedule it. So, like I said, one of those things that we miss out on is this. Because we fail to share the joy and it looks like we are discountenancing something that the Lord has told us. Sometimes things will not be all together. Pastor Luke told us the other day, he says put on the whole armor of God. You don't want to leave one aside. When the Bible has said to do it all the time, but then... Like prayer, when you don't do it, you know that you are wrong. So kind of, we know that your, your conscience is still in the right place. But how many of us feel bad when we don't rejoice? Say, ah, I've gone three days without rejoicing. Think about it. How many of us have done that? To just say, I have not rejoiced in a while. And you see, the reason why I went like this is because that's exactly how the long, they know me, I like writing long. That's how the long message for this morning took a cut. So before, we now call it pre-opening. So we are going to schedule joy within this service. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to have a shouting period. We are going to have a shouting time. One of the words that I feel that we do not do is this. And I have a word for you. Psalm 149. We are going to express Psalm 149 in this service to begin. If I can preach, I will preach. If not, read it in the book. <laughs> Psalm 149. He says, praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. So we have it all together. Hallelujah. We are all together here. We are not going anywhere. Amen. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Hallelujah. I'm reading out what you are going to do. I'm not, I'm not just teaching. See, last week, Pastor Demi taught it. This, you will practicalize it. 
Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in a dance. We are going to dance in this place. <laughs> Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. He said, let the saints be joyful in glory. Ha, ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let them be joyful in glory. Joyful in glory. Joyful with an anointing. Let them be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their seats. Well, standing up upon their beds. Anyway, <laughs> let them sing aloud. He says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Hallelujah. Seven to nine is what is going to happen. And I speak that prophetically because that's literally what I saw. This is what is going to be happening as you are doing these things. He says, as you are singing those praises, he says, to execute vengeance upon the hidden and punishment upon the people. You think you have a lot of enemies. You think there are people that are trying to get you. God says, leave them for a bit. Focus on me. He says, as you praise, let the high praises of God be in your mouth. He says it's a two-edged sword. On the one side, you are doing what God asked you to do. You are praising God. He says, I'll praise him at all times. His praise shall continually be on my lips. He says, let the voice of thanksgiving, let it be in your mouth. He says, you should proclaim his name every day. Let the sacrifice of Thanksgiving always be there. Every more, every time. So you are with one sword, with one side of the sword, doing what God said. The other side is what sometimes you forget. That he's doing another thing. He says he's executing. There is an execution. Pastor told us, Joe is a weapon. I'm showing you. It's a, he says it's a two-edged sword. While you are praising God and doing what you ought to do, he says to execute vengeance upon the hidden, punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. As you are shouting and praising and rejoicing, things are being bound. People are being taken care of. Situations are being taken care of. He says to bind them. He says whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. This is one way to bind. He says to bind their kings. He says to execute upon them the judgment written. You think you know how to punish them. You think you know how to deal with your enemies. You think you know how to deal with your situations. God says there is a judgment written. There is a judgment written. They have their portion. How will you execute it? He said, you just be praising. You just be praising. Let the high praises of God just be in your mouth. Let it just be in your mouth. Just be praising him in a dance. Just be doing that and running around. Just be praising him. Forget those troubles and just face on the Lord. He says to execute upon them the judgment written. He says this honor, this privilege, to be able to do all like this. This honor have all. All. All is saints. Not some. 
not, you are not, you are running to pastor, you are looking for this, you are looking for that. He says, this privilege is an exclusive right of all God's sons. It's an exclusive right of the sons of the Lord just to be doing like this. Second Chronicles 20. The Bible tells us about Joseph. Three kings came to fight him. They were too mighty for him. He didn't know what to do. He began to pray to God. Lord, these people are too mighty for me. Save us from this might. We don't know what to do. They are too powerful for us. God said, don't worry. You will not need to fight in this battle. It's not yours. It's not yours to fight. It's mine to fight. Okay. So, dear God, dear sir, if I'm not fighting, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? God didn't tell him what to do. The Bible says he consulted with his people. I said, you know what? If we're not going to fight, God says to just go. Maybe we'll just praise God. Amen. Maybe we'll just praise God. Maybe we'll just bless his holiness. Maybe we'll just say praise the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy is endures forever. For he is good. You see, the people that can say that he is good are the people that maintain his word. The Bible says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. He says, but now have I kept your word. He says, you are good. When you keep God's word, you then know that he is, he says, now you are good and you do good things. Because, and that's what we are going to do. We are going to focus on the word. So, Joseph was moving around and they were just blessing the Lord. For he is good. See, that's doing the word. For he is good. Hallelujah. And his mercy endures forever. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And the Bible tells us that as soon, what's coincidence? He says, as soon as they began to sing praises, the Lord said, ambushments. Hey, the three kings, a might bigger than you. He says, the Lord sent ambushments in their camp. And they killed one another. So great was the dead. He says, when they came there, there were three days in the gathering of the spoils. Hallelujah. You see, as you are praising God, that's what you're going to do. Just gathering up the spoils. Just gathering up the spoils. Just gathering up the spoils. You see, you are not the one fighting in that battle. You are just gathering up the spoils. Just gathering up the spoils. He says, it was so much. It was so much. Just gathering up the spoils. Three days in the garden. What were they doing? As soon as they began to praise. The Lord set ambushments in the camp. We know the story of Joshua. The same thing with Joshua. The Bible says they came to Jericho. And because of them. The people of Jericho blocked the entire place. No one went out. No one came in. Say, I'm going to shut you out. I'm going to shut you out of that business. Because of you. I'll make sure this business does not function. I'll make sure one law, one thing is done against you. One way I'm God is going to shut you in. I'm going to shut you in Nigeria. You're not going to be able to make the FX. You're not going to be able to do what I told you to do. Okay. And the Bible says, day two, God gave them instructions. You know what you're going to do? You're going to go around this city. Seven times you will go around. He says, don't shout. Don't shout. Just be going around. Just blessing his name. <laughs> just blessing his name. As soon as they blow the first one, all of you just praise. All of you just go around and just praise. First day. Second day. This wall is still there. Third day. This wall is still there. Fourth day. Fourth hour. This thing is still there. He says on the seventh day, when you go around it, he says when he tells you, then shout. And 
The Bible says, has they shouted? Something between doing that praise thing, doing that joy thing, and manifestations just beginning to happen. Something about it. He says, as soon as they did it, the fear came upon all people, and first they are walking down flat. Wow. What is the connection between shouting and what? See, it's not the one you have in your house. Where you just have, what's the diameter of the house? Six by six. No, this is a literal, this is a, in a literal city. People live there. That entire thing, that whole thing came crushing down. I thought they shut themselves in. Oh, they shut down that business. They shut down your house. They shut down something so that you won't make a way. You don't worry. Do what we're asking you to do today. Schedule it as we are doing. You see, you are going to see what the Lord will do. You are going to see what is all good going to do about all those things that you are talking about. Hezekiah, they brought a letter to Hezekiah. They're addressing him. The king of Assyria addressing him. He said, I'm going to finish you. But I don't trust in that your God. He just carried the letter. Put it in the house. Just put it down before the Lord. I don't know where you came with cares. Like pastor was telling us, you don't have the capacity to handle care. That's why he tells you not to worry. Because worry will drag you to the part of the negative and it will make it achieve. You see, because you are working with your mind. It's going to bring the fulfillment of all those bad stuff. He says, you don't have the capacity to care. It's the guy dropped it. And began to walk around. Praying to the Lord. And then God began to speak to Ezekiah. As though the letter did not exist. He said, you know what's going to happen? This is going to be a sign to you. This year, you will eat out of that which grows by itself. And next year, you will do the same. In the third year, um, you are going to start planting. Excuse me, sir. There's still a letter in my front. God is talking to you about three years' time. You are talking about somebody has said, I, somebody has sent a letter to you today. You see, that's literally what God can do with you. As you are praising, he can begin to show you your future. And he will. You will begin to see what he's going to do in the years to come. You are going to see what he's going to do in the next years. And then he told him, well, just for your news. You see that king of Assyria? He won't even come here. He will not shoot one arrow in this place. Because, you see, you are trying, you want God to deal with the king of Assyria before talking to you about the next phase. But God doesn't count that. God says, just focus on me. Just focus on me. In Acts 19 or Acts 16, they made a mistake. They beat Paul and Silas. They bound them. They threw them in jail. Their backs were bleeding. It was dripping hot. They put their feet in stocks. Bound them and threw them into the innermost prison. Like, but they bound everything. They didn't bind their mouth. Hi. The devil has done everything, but you still got a mouth. You still got a mouth. You still got a mouth to pray. They left their mouth open. What a mistake. What an error. And the Bible says, at midnight. At midnight. You see, I don't believe the Bible just put that just like, just like that. Maybe midnight really means when it's so bad. When everything looks like nothing is going to come out of the break of dawn. When everything looks bleak. Everything looks like nothing is going on here. He says at midnight. At midnight. Didn't make sense. But at midnight. He says they prayed. And they sang praises to God. What kind of audacity is this? With all that pain. With all that, he says, you prayed. You sang praises to God. As though these did not exist. And they didn't do it small. 
He says the prisoners heard them. Some of you want to praise. We say, now rejoice. And then you go, woo. Woo. Hallelujah. Or then you talk in tongues. You see, there's a time to talk in tongues. There's a time not to talk in tongues. When you rejoice, you literally rejoice. You don't do it small. He says the prisoners heard them. And I like that. Suddenly, always just a, a, a connection with this. Something just scattering. <laughs> Something just breaking through. Something just opening up. He says, and suddenly, and suddenly, suddenly, he said they were praising God. They were, they had forgotten about that issue. Just praising God. He said, suddenly, there was a great earthquake. The great heart, and it shook the entire prison. He says, and all the doors were opened. And not only them. He says, everyone in the prison, their bands were loose too. People have brought you. Now you have entered trouble with people. You are in the midst. All of you are going through the same stuff. But you are not the same. Maybe tomorrow morning, you are going back to the office. You already know the problem on ground. But you are here now. You see, a lot can depend on what you are doing now. A lot can depend on you just praising God now. A lot of can depend on just you just shouting. You see, you can set others free. You can set people free. Just rejoicing. Just rejoicing. And the Lord is sending ambushments. And the Lord is creating paths. And the Lord is opening doors. And earthquakes are happening. And miracles are happening. Some you don't even know about. Things are just opening up. In Luke 10, the Bible says that the 70 came to Jesus and then they came rejoicing with joy. Say, praise God. The devils are subject to us in your name. Jesus said, wow, okay, that's nice. Have be else and fall like lightning from heaven. Okay, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. That's good, right? But he says, don't just rejoice in that. That they are subject, that the demons are subject to you in my name. He says, but rejoice that your name are written. You see, even if you have nothing more to rejoice about, he tells you the main one to rejoice. He says that your names are written. That your names are written. That you are, oh Lord. That you belong to the Lord. That you belong to him. That your names are written. Just to return. What does it mean your names are written? Hebrews chapter 12. Give me amplified. Classic. Hallelujah. Your names are written. You see, a Christian is not just a normal man. You are not just a normal man. Because clearly I cannot get, because that was what I was going to talk about. You are not just a normal man. The Bible says, to them that believed on him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. He says, which were born, not of blood, which were born, not of the will of the flesh, Think your papa and your mama just came together and just pop, yours pop. And that's how your life came about. And that's all you think about yourself is today. No, that's not who you are. He says, which are born, not of the will of the flesh. Not because blood came together. But they are born of God. A Christian is a might. He's born of the living God. He says, you are of God. Little children. He says, and you have overcome. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in you. You are of God. You are from God. You are your origin. Your origin is from God. So, when we are talking, that's where we are talking from. He says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. The seed is which is sperm. You are not born of a sperm that can be destroyed. It says being born of incorruptible seed. 
You see, every seed has these genes. You've got the genes of God in you. You've got those genes of the word of God. He says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, but the word of God that lives and abides forever. And abides forever. That's what we are calling to. When we are saying, when did I say we should open? I don't even know your name. Hebrews 12. That your names are written. Because sometimes you forget who you are. You don't know who you are. You forget that you are someone special. He says a royal priesthood. A people set apart. Oh Lord my God. You are special. God's own special purchased possession. You've got the life of God in you. This, that's what we are speaking about. You've got life within you. You are bearing the glory of God. Upon you, that glory. We read earlier. He says, the glory that you have given to, to me. Ah, sorry, God. I've given. Like, I've given it unto them. He says, that they may know. That the world may know that you sent me. That the world may know that you have loved them. Just us. Just us. Look at this person who is now being encumbered by so many stuff. Now this person is encumbered by trouble here and there. The Lord says, Hebrews 12, we are still there, please just hear me hold it. You don't need all these ones. Hebrews 12. Verse 22. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amplified classic. 22. I can quote the King James. I don't... Uh, he says, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem. <laughs> and the myriad of angels in, oh God, oh God, in first street garden. You think they are yet just, they are shooting sword and they are, they are burning face. So who is the enemy there? Who is the enemy in that place? If you come there, my son. No, that's not the way they wage war. <laughs> they wage war in joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> they wage war in joy. He says, in festive gathering, we'll come back there. We'll come back there. Next verse. He says, unto the general assembly, an assembly of the firstborn that are registered as city. That's what I'm talking about. Registered as citizens. Is it because you are not carrying a card? Say, your identity number is what? What's your identity number? You are registered as a citizen. Citizens have rights. Citizens in good countries, in normal countries, they have things that are cruel to them. <laughs> they have things that are cruel to them. It says, rejoice in this. That your names are written as it you are registered as citizens in heaven. Registered as citizens. Philippians 3.20. This is for a conversation. He's in heaven. Our conversation is in heaven. That is to say, we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. It's from there we walk. That's from where. He says, so rejoice in that. You don't have any other thing. Rejoice that way. Rejoice that your names are written. Hallelujah. So now let's go back. Hebrews 12, 22. Still the same place. Hebrews 12, 22. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You are come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God, and to the heavenly Jerusalem, and the myriad of angels in festive gathering, in joyful gathering, 
they are here, they are shouting in joy. The very first time we saw a gathering of angels, the same thing, hallelujah. Look to, the Bible tells us that one angel first came, met the shepherds, said, I bring great joy. I bring news of great joy. For here in the city, a son, a savior has been born, Jesus Christ the Lord. And the Bible says the next thing, a lot more joined. And then they were shouting, saying, glory to God. Glory in the highest. Peace upon all men. Peace upon all men. They are, God. that's, you see. This, some people will be shocked when they get to heaven. You think you are going to see a lot of sanctimonious. Holy, praise the Lord, praise Him. You are going to see a lot of glory, glory, hallelujah. Before they just look at God again, it shined again. Ah, ah. This glory is too much. This glory is too much. The Bible says in First Peter 1, it says, Of which salvation the prophets inquired and said diligently, Searching what or what manner of time the, pro, the, uh, the Spirit of Christ in claim was signifying when he prophesied beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that you follow. Some of you watch Passion of the Christ. You are still living in Passion of the Christ. Christ has suffered. Oh, that's why I'm suffering. Ah, uh, I'm just living through this life. I don't even know if I'm going to make it tomorrow. He said the suffering has passed. He says what the spirit of Christ in them signified was the glory. Was the sufferings of Christ and the glory that you follow. But that's not all. He says, this has been preached unto you. But those that have preached the gospel unto you. He says, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. He says, which things? Angels are desiring to look into the things that you have. You, you think you don't have enough to praise about. You think you don't have enough to shout about. The Bible says, these guys who are always in a center of joy, who are always rejoicing, they still want to close Shalembeena. Close Shalembeena. What are these things they spoke about? Who are these guys that bear the glory of the Lord? Who are these guys? What do they know? Why are they shouting like this? You see, they, they can shout in glory because if you see God, if you see God, your, ne your leg will buckle. Many of you think you have questions for God. When you see God, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him. Let him appear. <laughs> I'm going to ask God, why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? Okay. Let him appear before you. Let him, well, he, just, <laughs> he appeared to Thomas. Say, I want to see the Lord. No, I don't believe. I don't believe he rose from the dead. Okay. Say, Thomas, come and touch. Touch my hand. Touch my, my Lord and my God. You see, even with the glory that they see, there's something. Hi. He says, what is man? That thou art mindful of him. Not the son of man that has visited him. He says you have crowned him with glory. And honor. And that's even all men. Now talk less. Of you that Jesus said. The glory that you have given him. I have given them. That the world may know. So you, it's not the world. He didn't give it to the world. He gave his glory to you. His glory is on your inside. He says you. Then you don't know what to praise about. When we say rejoice, you don't know what to rejoice. This will occupy you the days of your life. Every single day that you live, he said angels are desiring to look into. So what's going on there? What's going on there? Psalm 2 and verse 1. Why do the in rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth have gathered themselves together. The princes of this world... They've come together against the Lord. Against the Lord and his anointed. He says, he who sits in the heaven shall laugh. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> he says, he who sits in the heaven shall laugh. He says, the Lord shall ride them. He will, he, he, he will scoff at them. 
The Lord will have them in derision. And then next verse, he will speak to them in his sore displeasure. He will speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Excuse me, sir. Why are you laughing before this? Why don't you speak to them, vex them in your sore displeasure, and then you have a reason to laugh? Oh boy, you have not been paying attention. We are not rejoicing because of the effect. We are not rejoicing when we see. You see, he says, he's so angry. But we first laugh. <laughs> he's so angry. He will first look at them. Get close to people here. Close to them, anybody. Like, what was all this? But speak now. Vex. No, he's so angry. He has to laugh first. The Bible says in Psalm 37, he said the wicked plot against the righteous. He gnashes his teeth against him. He said the God will just laugh at him. <laughs> he said, you are too small. You are too small. Why? He says, because he knows his end. He knows his days are coming. Oh, so do. I don't need to do anything first. You see, you just get me laughing. You just get, you see, that's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be partnering with God like that. You want to see God vexing. God displeasured. God scatter everywhere. God says, calm down. Let's laugh first. <laughs> Let's laugh first. Oh, glory. Let's laugh first. Let's, let's mock them a little bit. Let them do what they want to do first. All of creation waiting for Jesus to come. He came finish. And they're going to kill him. God's just laughing. Ha, 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 ha. Be playing. They play. They, they, you'll be running it now. He says, are they known? Are they known? They will have not tried it. Are they known his vexing? Are they known his displeasure? He said they wouldn't have touched it. He said because this is heaven's atmosphere. God wants to do serious business. is joy. God's serious business. is just going to be joy. He's just going to be laughing. He's just going to get you praising. He's just going to get you joy unspeakable. Joy unspeakable. Full of glory. Joy unspeakable. I, I, I can't explain it. Joy unspeakable. Three kings are gathered against me. Joy unspeakable. He's full of the anointing. He's full of glory. I don't understand how he's going to look and how it's going to look. That's what we have been saying. You don't need to see anything. What we see is a connection between your present and the manifestations of things happening. So what are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? In the next, please just give us five, ten minutes. Just go about. Just run around. Leave your seat. That's what I'm saying. Just praising the Lord. Say praise the Lord. For he is good. Praise the Lord. For he is good. Look those things in the eye. Say praise the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Whoa, glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to God. 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 Ha ha ha.
some of you are saying, Oh Lord, fight my battles. Feed your fan or don't feed your for me. Bow on your fight those who are fighting against me. God says, Calm down. You do this one. Lord, take up your shield and, and fight my case. God says, Calm down. You run. You down. Hey.
and they said, the Bible says when they began to praise, God said, ambushment. Whatever ambushment means, whatever interventions are needed, God, you know. God, you can sort that. I'm just going to say, for the Lord is good. And his mercy and joy. So, that's just what you are doing. For the next one minute. For the Lord is good. His mercy and yours forever. For the Lord is good. <laughs> For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord Job 5, let me help you. Job 5, he says, At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shall I be afraid of the beasts of the earth, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with you. All of nature, all of nature is on your side. That's what he's saying. That's why you laugh. All of nature is on the side of the Son of the living God. He says, and you shall know. This is why you praise. You will know that you that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and your visit, you shall visit, you shall visit your habitation, and you shall not sin. He says, You shall know that your seed shall be great, and your offspring as the grass of the earth. Your children won't die. You will know that you will bring forth your children, they will not die in your hands. They shall be great. He says, thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age. In a full age. You won't die before your time. No, I shall not die but live. He says, you shall come to thy grave in a full age. Like a shock of corn comes in his season. He says, see, 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 see. Behold, see. That's what I'm trying to make you see. We have searched it. And so it is. What you are doing now is not going to change that it works. That you are not doing it is not going to change that it works. He said, come, come. We have searched it. It is so. Hear it and know it for your own good. Just go ahead in the next one minute. People did it. God said ambushment. They were gathering the spouse for three full days. It works. That's what I'm saying. So you just say, for the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. One more cycle. For the Lord is good. And his mercy forever. Praise God. Praise God. Just lift your hands. For the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. He said, he said, who has redness of eyes? But them that tarry long with the wine, that stay with mixed wine. You see, it will continue like this. You will not go home. Hey! Hey! Glory! Glory!
thank you, Lord. Thank you, blessed Father. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.